In this video, I will explain why I do not believe that necessity should stop the fine-tuning argument. First, I'm going to give some background on the fine-tuning argument. You've seen those physics equations that represent the laws that describe our universe. Now, in these equations, some physical constants pop up. These are numbers that are just encoded into our physics and not derived by other equations. Each constant has some certain level of strength, which has effects on what our universe will actually end up looking like. Obviously, if the strengths of these constants were very different, no life could exist. An obvious example is if gravity were super strong, we'd all be crushed. But it turns out the strengths of these constants have to fall into a very small life-permitting range for life to be able to occur. If it were any stronger or weaker, life would not be possible. For example, the cosmological constant, represented by the Greek letter lambda, is fine-tuned to one novum trigentillionth, or one part in 10 to the 120, a 1 followed by 120 zeros. In other words, if the constant were a bit stronger, no life would have ever existed, even if that extra bit was a novum trigentillionth of the current strength that it is right now. Now, there are a bunch of super fine-tuned constants like this. That's pretty impressive, but how impressive is it exactly? Well, if there are a range of values, and you were to pick a random value, say by shooting a dart at the range of possible values, the chance that it would fall in that certain range, as long as certain conditions are met, like every point being equally likely, the probability is the length of the certain range we're looking for divided by the range of all possible values. So if the dart could have landed anywhere in a 5 meter range, the chance of it falling in a certain 1 meter range would be 1 meter divided by 5 meters, which would be equal to 1 fifth, which is equal to 20%. This is of course assuming the certain range we're talking about is smaller than the range of all possible values. If we were hoping to see the darts fall somewhere within a 3 meter range, for example, but the dart thrower is so close that all his darts fall in a half of a meter wide section in the middle, then of course all the darts are going to fall in the range we're looking for. So, bringing this back to fine-tuning, the life-permitting range is very small, but how large is the range of possible values? What strengths could these constants have possibly been? Well, we don't know. We only have one universe, so there's no way to get an idea of what these possible ranges are. Some atheists would ask you at this point, what if the size of the range of the possible values was zero? That's right, every constant needs to have the strength that it does in fact have. The dart thrower started with his dart already in the bullseye. So, even though the life-permitting range is small, it's no surprise that our constants fall inside. The atheists could say that their idea about the possible range of values is even less arbitrary than any other range of values, so it's a perfectly fine way of explaining the data. This argument seems pretty sketchy to me. I could always ask why these specific values are necessary rather than others. The atheist would respond that I'm missing the point. If something is necessary, like the laws of logic and the value of pi, or math more generally, or metaphysical laws, then you can't give an explanation for why they're the way they are, it's just necessary. I still think the argument seems a little sketchy, and I can demonstrate why with a thought experiment. This is going to be called the Pi Bible Hypothesis. I'm going to explain what it is, but I want you to watch to the end of the video before checking if it's actually true. A few starting points. The Greek alphabet in the New Testament has 24 letters. The Hebrew alphabet in the Old Testament has 22 letters. So the text of the Bible in its original language can be written with 46 distinct symbols. Now, according to my very rough searches, there are roughly a million letters in the Bible in their original languages. But if the internet lied and the number is different, that shouldn't be super important. Now, we can write pi in base 46. This would be the most natural way to turn the digits of pi into the Greek and Hebrew letters. The Pi Bible hypothesis is, quite simply, that the first million base 46 digits of Pi will write out the Old and New Testaments in their entirety. Is the Pi Bible hypothesis true? I don't know. I haven't checked. It probably isn't. The chance of that happening if the digits of Pi were chosen randomly would be 1 in 46 to the power of a million. However, the number Pi has its digits necessarily, not randomly. So, atheist, you're probably like me and haven't checked to see if the Pi Bible hypothesis is true. If it were true, would that count as at least a bit of evidence that Christianity were true? The atheist would probably want to say yes, but that's inconsistent. Remember, if we can dismiss the fine-tuning of the universe on the basis that the constants have their values necessarily, then we could dismiss the Pi Bible hypothesis because if it were true, it would be necessarily true. But that's ridiculous. Christianity would obviously be more plausible if the Pi Bible hypothesis turned out to be true. Maybe the Pi Bible hypothesis wouldn't be a knockdown argument for the truth of Christianity, but it would at least be some evidence. We can formulate this train of logic as a syllogism. Premise 1. If the fine-tuning is not evidence for God, then the Pi Bible hypothesis, if true, would not be evidence. Premise 2. The Pi Bible hypothesis, if true, would be evidence. Conclusion. Therefore, the fine-tuning is evidence for God. This is a logically valid argument via modus tollens. This is why I think that necessity shouldn't stop the fine-tuning argument. 
an atheist shouldn't appeal to necessity to answer the fine-tuning argument. This doesn't block off the atheist from appealing to the multiverse, but that's another video. One final note, if the digits of pi were chosen randomly, the chance that the pi Bible hypothesis is true is roughly 1 in 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 6.2. The chance of a random universe having a low entropy initial condition like ours is 1 in 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 123. That makes that other number down there look super tiny. So the pi Bible hypothesis, if true, would be way less surprising than the fine-tuning in the universe. That's the end of my video. Thank you for watching.